Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I install a tachometer in my 77 square body truck I call Dale. So stay tuned. So generally speaking, this is usually a pretty simple project, no major tools required. I'm gonna be using a drill as well as a screwdriver and then some wire crimpers to uh, get things wired up. Now, let me show you what we have to do in order to get this thing running. So what I've got here is just a cheap knockoff, I don't even know what brand it is, Stepmaster, I guess it says, tachometer, and it does have peak light capabilities as well as an adjustable max red line, and it does light up at night if you wire it into your light switch, which I will be doing. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to find out where we want to mount it. At first I thought maybe I wanted to put it up here on the dash, but then I thought, no, I don't like the looks of something sticking out from the dash that you can see from outside the vehicle. So then I thought maybe I'll mount it on the column. Well, no, I didn't like that idea either because this whole section of the column moves when you shift uh, into gear, and then down here is just a small little area and it only comes with a flat plate for mounting. Now you could probably curve that and make it work, but I've come up with something just a little bit better. So what I've opted to do is I've opted to use this location down here just below the speedometer. And uh, because this thing will spin inside its little case here, I think that I have enough room to mount it like so and still be able to read it and uh, you know get everything that I need out of it. So in order to get that mounted there, we do have to take this little trim panel off the bottom of the dash and there's four Phillips screws and then it basically just kind of pops out into your hand. And it does give us access right in through here into our wiring harness where we're gonna tap into 12 volt power, ground your lights, and then as well be able to run the wire out underneath the hood to get your tack signal. So. I've already started by getting this panel off as well as my first pilot hole drilled. So I'm gonna get the other two holes drilled and mount the bracket in place and then we can start snaking our wires underneath the column. So now that we've got this wired, what we're gonna do is plug in our wires on the back of the tack and run them through the hole that's provided in the housing and then get them up underneath the dash. So there's our tack actually mounted on the dash. We're gonna run our wires inside. One thing that we are going to have to do is on this trim piece, we're gonna to have to kind of notch out just a little section right here in the corner for those wires to go in. So I'm gonna go inside on the grinder and do that now. Just enough. Let's go try it out. I think that's going to work just perfect, so I'm going to go ahead and put our screws in right now. So one thing that we are going to have to do is we're going to have to put some adhesive in there to keep that from bouncing all over the place. Uh, we'll get to that another time, but as it sits right now, the install looks clean. Now we got to get to wiring up everything down below here. So if we follow our instructions, red and black obviously is 12 volts all the time and ground. The white is going to be to our light switch and then the yellow is going to go to an ignition switch. That should be pretty easy because everything is located right here on the steering column. We should be able to tap into that fairly easy. On the tack side, it does give us two choices, and I'm going to have to figure out which one it wants us to do, a black and a green. Now, it says the green is the signal wire, but it also says the black one is as well. So we'll test them both and see what we've got once we get underneath the hood. So we've got to run this out through the firewall. So on these older trucks, you do have these spade connectors kicking out of here. So this one says 15, this one's a 15, this one's a 4 amp. 
Um, but this one will only come on with the lights. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap into one of these 15 amp circuits with a spade connector and just kind of plug into it. And for 12 volts, what we're gonna need, see there's your power on ignition. And then up here, we've got one coming down from this little wire that has its own little spade connector built in. And we're gonna plug into it. And that's gonna give us our 12 volt source. And then down here is gonna give us our ignition source. We can pretty well ground it out anywhere we want to. As far as the lights, this one here says it's light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug into it right here with the test light and I'm gonna pull the lights on and see if the test light lights up. If it does, then that will be our source for our lights. If I can get it to stay in there long enough. And there we have it. Okay, so I'm gonna get the wiring and then we can go move underneath the hood and find our tack signal under there. Okay, so we've got all of our wiring done. We've got our lights plugged into the lights. Ignition, ignition, 12 volt, 12 volt, and we grounded it out to a mounting screw for the fuse panel. Let's go up top and see if the tack is actually functioning. So I'm gonna turn the key to the on position. And as you can see, it's doing its thing. And it's ready to roll. So all we gotta do is get us some tack signal from underneath the hood and we should be ready to go. Okay, so now that we're under the hood here, uh, I still have to fish my wires through somewhere. I haven't figured out where that's gonna happen yet, but on these HEI style distributors on the GMs, there are three wires coming out of the distributor. One of those wires is gonna carry a tack signal. We've got to start the vehicle up and with our test light grounded, we're going to poke each wire and see which one is giving us the signal. So, having said that, let's get to it. Well, that certainly was dangerous. We had smoke. So I'm guessing that that wire is not a tack signal wire, though that's probably 12 volts. And anyways, it uh, played a pretty dirty trick on my wiring job. So, we're back to the drawing board. We're gonna see if we can find out what's going on with uh, our tack signal. And we'll get right back to you. <coughs> okay, so we're gonna try this again. Unlike a Chrysler product where the tack signal comes out of the actual coil, on an HEI distributor there is a separate tack wire other than the three wires that go into it. So thanks to a YouTube search I figured that one out and I didn't even burn down old Dale despite what that wire looks like. The smoke smell is gone and it's now time to start her up and test the tack one more time just for you guys. And there you have it folks, there is a video on how not to burn down your 1977 C10 square body. I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> you should have seen the smoke, I'm telling you. Anyways, we'll come back and we'll close out this video. So I don't know how good the quality is going to be for you being able to see me right now because I've got the GoPro clamped to the ashtray in the old square body. It might be the new hiding spot for this camera when I'm doing vlogs like this. But I wanted to get out here tonight and take it for a drive with that new tack in just to see what RPMs this thing was going to be idling at going down the highway. So right now I'm doing about 65 on a secondary road and she's at about 23, 2400 RPM. And I'm okay with that. Because if you're going to be doing any amount of driving with this thing and you're on the highway, well, you certainly want it to get as optimal fuel mileage as possible. Now, the only thing that I'm finding with this, you're probably noticing it right now, is that when it goes into lockup at about 80 kilometers an hour or 50 miles an hour, 
it seems to want to shake and vibrate quite a bit. And I'm thinking that's just torque converter shutter and we may try an additive in the transmission fluid to see if it helps with that. Otherwise, well, I'm not sure. We'll have to get the transmission expert to figure it all out for us. That's gonna do it for this video, so thanks for sticking around and, you know, having me not burn down my truck was kind of a bonus today, but uh, at the end of the day, we managed to get the tack working and, uh, you know, I'm happy with everything the way it's going so far except for this guy in front of me who's going so slow that the truck still wants to go into overdrive and lock up. Um, I might just have to pass him here, so. And I guess that's how you do that. Car Guy and Six Fan Show is winding up season three. I hope you guys can tune in on Thursday evenings at seven o'clock central, eight o'clock eastern, nine Atlantic time, which is my time. And uh, we'll be hosting back and forth between myself and Grant Tommy, who is Street Six Fan. And it's a car show about cars. And uh, we have probably 40, 50 people in the chat at any given time. And uh, we tend to have lots of fun and occasionally we do have guests. So hope you can come around for that on Thursday evenings. And we'll end this video by saying, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys. God bless. We'll see you in the next one.